I've been getting a ton of questions about friction shifting, which friction shifters work with which derailleurs. So in this video, I'm gonna to try to give you everything you need to know so you can choose the right friction shifter in 2022. First off, there are a ton of friction shifters out there over the years. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. I'm gonna talk about the current ones that I use. I'm, tr I'm trying to keep this video shorter than five hours. So yes, I'm gonna admit some things. There are basically three major brands that I use, Microshift, the Silver Shifters by Rivendell, and the Shifters by Dicomp, also labeled any Cyclo. First off, Microshift, if you're friction shifting curious and you're using a modern drivetrain, and by that I mean 10 speeds or more, then this is, probably the shifter you should get. It works with the least amount of hassle and the least amount of hacking. It comes in different variations, everything from a flat bar uh, thummy to a drop bar bar end or on this bike. And probably my preferred method when I'm using curly bars is when it's paired with a Gevinol uh, brake lever. And if I were to suggest which specific one, I'd say get the one that's gonna cover the most speeds you'll, you think you'll ever use. So if you think you'll get a 12 speed drivetrain in the future, get that or an 11 speed. I don't plan to go beyond 11 speed. So I mostly just get the 11 speed uh, micro shift uh, shifters. You can run them in clicky or index mode if you want. I tend to run them in friction just because you know, that's, that's how I roll. If you get the 11 speed, Microshift shifter, it'll work with an Eagle rear derailleur, a Dior rear derailleur, 11 speed. It'll work with both mountain and road in 10 speed, nine speed, all the way down the line. That is the friction shifter you should get. If you don't want to hassle with any hacks and you want to run it on drop bars and on flat bars. Probably the only downside with the micro shift uh, friction shifters is that the right shifter, when it's in friction mode, it doesn't have a ratchet. It's not a huge deal. I have multiple bikes set up friction without a ratchet and you know, I'm still survived. So for example, on this bike, I've got the 11 speed micro shift in friction with, and with a SRAM GX Eagle rear derailleur and 11 to 51 Dior cassette. And it works great. I just took this out for a ride today, as a matter of fact. Okay, so there's been some skepticism about the feasibility of friction shifting 11 speed. Uh, so I set up my hardtack to do just that. So on this setup, I'm using the given all shifter. I'm going up a, up a hill and I'm shifting into a lower gear and it's not that big of a deal guys this is what the rear derailleur looks and sounds like and i'm going to shift to a harder gear do a little standing and climbing to show you that the micro shift shifter can hold the tension back down to easier gear. So there you go. Friction, 11 speed Eagle. Totally possible, totally viable. If you want to run a wide range one by, this is the one to get. You can do it in clicky mode. And then let's say something goes wrong, you can flip it into friction mode and bam, still have you covered. The next shifters I wanna talk about are the Dicomp slash any Cyclo shifters. These also come in a variety of flavors. Some are only nine speed and below. They do have some modern ones, which are pretty interesting. You can get them as down tube shifters, as thummy shifters, like we have here set up on Laura's bike. And they also have a variation, which is called like the wing shifter, which puts the friction shifting closer to your hands if you're running a road lever. What's interesting is they have more modern versions, which are meant to work with 11 speed derailleurs. And you'll notice that the barrel of the right shifter is kind of like comically large, like larger than the left one. This is of course to pull the additional cable that more modern rear derailleurs take. So somewhere between the nine speed rear derailleurs and the derailleurs today, although they are spanning the same distance in terms of the cassette, it requires more cable pull. So therefore, if you're gonna go friction shifting, uh, you need a larger barrel friction shifter. It's, it's really obvious with the die comp ones, but if you measure out the micro shift ones as well, all the modern ones have a larger diameter barrel also. What we have here on Laura's bike is the Any Cyclo shifter and an 11 speed cassette and an 11 speed GRX rear derailleur. And as you can see, no problem shifting through the cassette. 
The diet comps are probably the only name in town. If you want to shift with an 11 speed uh, rear derailleur and have ratcheting, probably the only downside with the diet comp stuff is uh, there's no bar end option. So you're kind of limited to the thummy or the wing shifter, which probably isn't to everyone's taste and it's a little bit on the spendy side. So again, use micro shift if you want to use a modern derailleur and don't care about the ratchet. If you want a ratchet and want to shift a modern derailleur, die comp is probably your easiest solution. Now we're gonna talk about the Rivendell Silver Shifters, which are probably my favorite for a bar end, but they do have some complications. They have a great ratcheting mechanism, just like the die comps, so, so they feel awesome when shifting. The only downside is when you're using them as a bar, bar end, they're really limited to nine speed and below rear derailleur. There are a couple of weird exceptions. Uh, so right now I've got the silver shifter uh, in the front here, 105 11 speed rear derailleur and 11 speed cassette. And this combination surprisingly works. So they'll shift no problem across most of the cassette and takes just a little bit of coaxing to get into that lowest gear in the rear. I've not tried this with a GRX uh, rear derailleur. We only have one in the household and it's on Laura's bike, but, but I thought this is pretty interesting. So this, however, will not work with a mountain bike 11 speed rear derailleur. If you put an Eagle rear derailleur on the back and try to shift it with the bar end, you'll probably get to the ninth cog, ninth or 10th cog, but you won't be able to do the whole cassette uh, without some modifications. So if you plan to use this with a, a one with a wide range one by and don't want to do any hacking, it's not your best choice. There are a couple ways to make this happen. The first one is to file the shifter pod. The Radivus had a post about this many years ago, and basically that increases the throw of the lever. So it lets you pull those uh, extra millimeters to work with a modern mountain bike rear derailleur. Another interesting hack you could do is use some cable pulley adapters. So either the wolf tooth can pan or something by JTEC or even the problem solvers. And what this does is that it magnifies the pull from the shifter just enough. So it will pull enough cable to work with a rear derailleur. In my experience, it actually works pretty well. The biggest challenge is trying to figure out where to put this in. If you place this in the rear derailleur, it kind of juts out. So you really want to splice it somewhere in the cable run. And I find that always a little tricky with these kind of pulley systems. The, th the third way, which is really hacky and I'm not ready to, to show quite yet, is to increase the barrel diameter of the shifter. I'm probably gonna do a YouTube short on that hack um, in a couple weeks. There is another interesting quirk about the silver shifter and that's if you're using it with a flat bar, so it's on like some kind of bar mounted thummy, there's more accessible throw. And in that instance, it will work with an 11 speed uh, rear derailleur. But if you want to use it as a bar end, uh, doesn't work so good. Here's another bonus combination that I think is pretty interesting. Let's say you're building up a gravel bike, uh, you're using an 11 speed cassette. Let's say it's something like 11 to 40 or 11 to 36 in 11 speeds with a nine speed friction shifter and a nine speed uh, rear derailleur. It actually works great with an 11 speed cassette. The point being is if you're not using a super wide range uh, rear cassette in 11 speeds, you can actually use a nine speed rear derailleur and a nine speed friction shifter. I think these old Dior ones will cover up to 11 to 40 pretty good without any like goofy uh, cable hanger uh, extender, depending on depending on your chain ring combo. So you could actually lock 11 speed shifting uh, in these nine speed rear derailleurs on an 11 speed uh, rear cassette if you use a friction shifter. And that's one thing I really love about this is because it really extends the life of these older components that are still perfectly functional. Like why throw this away? It works awesome. So hopefully I haven't thoroughly confused you, but to summarize, to make it really simple, if you want to do a wide range one by, you know, 11 to 50, 11 to 52 in the rear, then you've got two choices. You can either use micro shift. If you want to use those modern derailleurs, but have ratcheting and friction, then die comp is your best solution without having to do any hacky stuff. If you're going to be using mostly nine speed drivetrains, either nine speed rear derailleurs and nine speed cassettes or nine speed rear derailleurs and 11 speed cassettes, then Rivendell is a great option. There are ways to extend it. So it works with a modern rear derailleur. You can file away the shifting pod. You can use a cable pulley adapter or you can increase the barrel adapter with JB Weld or Putty. 
but armed with this information now, you should be able to, to walk into any bike shop or bike co-op and know which components you can grab and still shift on your bike. As the supply chain gets worse and we get closer and closer to our Mad Max future, good luck finding a 12 speed flat top chain. Do you know what I'm saying? With friction shifting, you'll be riding your bike far into the apocalypse. Hopefully that answered your questions and if you found this video helpful, uh, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or buying a sticker and patch. Every little bit helps. And as always, everybody, keep the supple side down.